Okay. Hello. There it is. <laughs> okay. So, I hope you all enjoyed that uh, 2014 vintage. Um, oh my god, chat's filling up. I love it. Yes, today is going to be a good one. Once again, happy 413. It's been 24 hours since yesterday's stream started, and holy fucking shit, things happened. Okay, welcome, Front Burrito, Sneak Cat, Odd, Blake, Aleph? Has Aleph said anything in chat? I don't... I'm losing track of the history here. Oh, my phone's freezing and I can't look at it. That's fine. Um, <laughs> as you can see, on my screen right now is the link to the beginning of the Homestuck epilogues, plural? <laughs> Aleph can't... Oh, no! Evan the Jennifer. Yeah. I didn't realize. Damn. So I say something gross in her honor. Um, there, yeah. Um, yeah, so we had, like, a lot, a lot happening here. Wow. Where do I even start? <laughs> I mean, okay, 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 okay. No, I know where to start. I set up a little a little visual journey here. So this was posted by Viz Media at around 10.15 a.m. Eastern Standard Time this morning. The epilogue was posted at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, Viz fucked up. <laughs> this wasn't supposed to go up that early. But it also gave us the first piece of 100% no questions, concrete proof that the epilogue is going up, uh, like today. So then people, the you know, people on Twitter from the back end were saying, you know, just give it a couple hours, and then it went up at one o'clock, and everyone was like, "Holy fuck!" Um, other things that happened today, though, other important things of note: Wet Pumpkin is back. Um, you haven't read it? <gasps> oh, you're gonna be reading it for the first time. I'm so honored to be the first person to bring this wonderful experience to you. Oh, and just so everybody is aware as well, <clears throat> um, I am recording the stream and it's going up on YouTube, just in case that's a thing that people are concerned with or not. Uh, just for transparency's sake, this one is definitely going up on YouTube. This is one for the books. Um, <clears throat> my goodness, I have something stuck in my throat. <clears> throat> Not sure Sam is coming, but might be asleep and might not. Okay. Hopefully we can get a nice a nice little party of folks to uh Oh, you're gonna die. <laughs> yeah, it's Ooh, front reader, you haven't read it either? <gasps> oh my goodness. This is gonna be exciting. I'm so excited. Oh, I I love being able to usher people into this wonderful new experience. Um so yeah, what pumpkin games is back. and Sky Annette is kaput. Sky and it's gone. So whatever happened behind the scenes, like maybe there was some legalese bullshit where they needed to completely rebrand for a little bit before they could get the What Pumpkin name back. I mean, most notably, this is What Pumpkin Games. It is not strictly What Pumpkin, it is What Pumpkin Games, which is also the, na the name of the company that um, they used to publish Hive Swap. Um... <laughs> R.I.P. Skyanet. Yeah, Skyanet, I mean, the name kind of got dragged through the mud <laughs> um, in January. That was something all right. So, I don't know, I mean, I'm kind of glad that they're, like, putting that era to rest because <laughs> it did not start well. Um, too hyped to not? Yeah, I was, like bouncing i woke up at like 10 o'clock this morning which is really early for me um but um and then i was like on the computer and i was you know participating in chats and then i was and i went and i had like a quick breakfast and then i immediately came back upstairs and as soon as it was up i was on it oh my god and i was flipping my shit and y'all are gonna flip it too and i'm loving it okay um yeah so this is you know there's so, so homestuck hive swap friends and music twitter um, so they've got all of the appropriate links. There's really, there's nothing else to this website yet, but 
hopefully what pumpkin games coming back being like an official thing is a move in the direction of hype swap act two fingers crossed right it's been about a year now since it was supposed to come out um so hopefully that's been enough time for whatever internal issues to get sorted out um but yeah you still have an old pumpkin sticker on your laptop oh yeah their old logo was also really cute um with like the question mark that was that was clever i like that a lot but yeah they've rebranded their back um they're on twitter they've been active i mean they haven't been retweeting too much um or tweeting too much basically so this is viz media posted both of these also to their tumblr um oh shit my phone just went to sleep damn it i mm, it's so frustrating i gotta watch it because i need to like keep an eye on chat um shit that's right let me i keep forgetting copy <laughs> and paste into chat um That reminds me, where's my video editing <laughs> Word document? Give me a second here. I gotta get my video editing stuff together because I'm gonna put all these links in the description as well. Um, shit. I'm, as I come back into my uh, video editing document, I realized that I forgot to put the links in the last speed dating for ghosts description. So I'm gonna have to do that after stream today. Okay, um, stuck. What pumpkin? There. Um, okay, and we're back. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this is what pumpkin's Twitter. Uh, so they said, Happy birthday, John Egbert. Ten years ago, you stood in your bedroom. Now it's time for something new. And that was definitely the one they intended to post at 10 o'clock, but then this one went out at the same time because I guess they just, like, don't know how the Tumblr queue works or something. Um... <laughs> But yes, this is it. Ten hours ago, yeah, they d they deleted they deleted the old Tumblr posts like after it went up, but like the damage was done, and this one was posted on time. Um, right, and this by Stephen. That's intern intern Z, uh, who worked at uh, Four Fans by Fans, um, is leaving the company. So that's what that is. So here's the deal. Um, all of these tweets from V. V is the one who's kind of been fielding, like, most of the field questions, which seems to be how things have been going ever since they made their Twitter account. Um, oh, I forgot to put the link in chat. Um, uh, Side-eye the tab that says Caliborn knowing it. <laughs> Caliborn's going with what he's ordering. <laughs> yeah, the Tumblr queue system is not good. I've only tried to use it very few times and i will admit that i just completely fucking gave up <laughs> like i was just like what the fuck is happening here and then i stopped trying um yes the meter candy we will get to that there's been a lot of discussion about what that means this so this is something that was actually um so the meter candy thing that comes up that was mentioned in the notes for book three and of course, theorizers went ape shit um, because, of course, he started going into it and then he was like, no, it's too soon. And now we know what he means by it's too soon. He didn't mean like, oh, I have to wait for the act six notes, six notes when we talk about the shrubs to talk about meter candy. He meant this. Ah. Um. Schrodinger's cat. You guys are fucking nuts over it? Yeah, man, like, mm, it's, it's something. So, uh, I'll start in on the first page. Homestuck epilogues, plural. Start. So, welcome, one and all, to the Homestuck epilogue. We are welcomed by a mock AO3 page archive of our own a mock archive of our own page so from the top the homestuck epilogues andrew hussey um Sefied variable and ct set so ct set is supposedly the, the pseudonym that v is using for this uh i haven't ooh, i haven't actually googled that username but i also don't want to start a witch hunt trying to find out uh who v really is or whatever you know so 
You don't have for the. <laughs> okay, so, um, uh, Coyote, welcome. Um, we are just getting started. <laughs> So right from the top, rating, mature. So you know there's going to be some shit. Category, which is the shipping, right? So F, 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 M, 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 multi, and other. So multi and other are kind of the ones to highlight here. Multi, I believe, is the tag that's used for polyamorous relationships. So going to be some of that. We see, see, now I'm, now, like, I want to be able to pull things back out of the story, but now I'm nervous about bringing up, like, spoilery things for the people who haven't read it yet. Um, so people who haven't read it, are you okay with out of context minor spoilers? Um, because there are some things that kind of, I would be interesting to bring up here, but that aren't, that don't like, aren't like big plot spoilers or whatever. Um, but yeah, so looking at the characters. Okay, so Odd, you're cool with it. Front Burrito, how are you feeling about that? I just don't want to step on any toes because, mm hmm I don't want to spoil anything if that's not the experience you're looking for. And we can always talk about this kind of stuff after, right? Um, but it would be neat because I do have kind of a comment about that, specifically the shipping stuff. Um, okay, let's, yes, Sneak Hat, there's, there's a little hidden gem in there. Let's hold our horses. So, John Rose, Dave Jade, good. Jane, Roxy, Jake, Ingl Jake uh, Dirk, got it. Barack Obama. You're cool too? Okay. So I'll just, I'll take a break. I'll just drop this bomb and then take a break from talking about the characters. Um, <clears throat> you're getting way too... No, that's awesome. Get pumped, Sneak Cat. Like this is, let's get this energy going. Um, the Obama administration is back the size of Texas and hurtling at the... <laughs> hurtling at the earth. Uh, Obama's the only character we need. Yeah, I... Mm. When the fuck is Barack Obama going to come into this? Like, this just, I am getting, like, immediate flashbacks to MC Escher, that's my favorite MC, which also literally includes Barack Obama as a character. Um, <laughs> so, I'm just kind of like, ooh, what is happening there? So, right, so, right, uh, uh, I am losing track of my thoughts. I have so many things I want to say about this, I'm super excited. Um, <clears throat> So, we have FF, F, FM, and MM. So, multi and other. Um, multi would be polyamorous. So, that's like, you know, like that kind of uh, comment that uh, is made about uh, Jade Dave Cat and how they have kind of like an ambiguous relationship. How, you know, like Rose isn't really sure what's going on there. <laughs> uh, and other, some people are speculating that that's just because... There are non-binary characters, like we can see Dave Pettis right down here. Um, that just highlighted, like, everything. Um, <clears throat> uh, uh, I'm, lo I'm losing track of chat. <laughs> uh, um, oh, you need to continue reading that? Oh, yeah. No, MC Escher is a fucking fantastic pick. Ah, and Cantown. Yeah. It's time to promote some good pals. Um, <laughs> I I started reading, odd, I started reading the fic that you posted yesterday, but then the epilogue was posted and I just, I, it ended up not happening. Um, but while we're, while we're on the subject, um, so here's uh, odds fake. First chapter was posted yesterday. Let me just put that in my thing. And then also, I believe I've also promoted this on one of the friend sim streams. If anyone's curious, um, we also have uh, Blake's fic takes a can town to raise a grub, which is also um, updated for four thirteen as well. So links in chat. Um, And let me put those in my document. Okay. Cool. Awesome. Good shit. Um, <laughs> no problem. Y'all, I am 110% supportive of all y'all and both y'all and your fix. Because that's good shit. I'm going to put that shit out there. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, okay. So, 
that's good. I, I just, I want to do that just while I remembered. Um, okay. My brain is going in so many different directions right now because there's so much to talk about. Um, right. Okay. So Alpha, uh, Beta, Alpha, Barack Obama, um, Aradia, Tavros, Solix, Karkat, Kanaya, Terezi, Vriska, Gamzi, Aridin, Feferi. So we have 10 of 12 beta trolls. Uh, you'll know, uh, so Nepeta and Equius are missing from this list because, of course, so we see Arania and, so, right, side notes. So Arania and Mina are the only ancestors. I can think of a couple people who would be very upset by that, and I just hope that they're not feeling too hurt, but we're not seeing the ancestors in this, um, save for Arania and Mina. Um... Right, so we see that Dave Pettisprite is here, so that's where Nepeta went off to. That's Nepeta there. Um, Equius is in Arqueus, so that's why Equius is not on this list. Um, if you just write, hey, I like this in the comments, it's it's kudos, but it makes you cry even more. Oh, that's so cute. Yeah, I've been meaning to write more comments. I get nervous about, like, I don't know, saying things, but I should comment on more things. I know it's a good thing to support, way to support fic authors. So all y'all, let's, uh, community goal, comment on more fics. <laughs> and Knuckles. Yeah, honestly, this fucking massive list of characters. No, the, uh, ta ta <laughs> no, tacking on and Knuckles to this entire list of content warnings. Anyway, <laughs> so, but, uh, okay. So, Equius is not in this list because he is an Arqueus. However, Arqueus is not listed here. So Arqueus will not be in the epilogues, and neither will Jaspros. Jaspros is also missing. So we only have one of the three sprites here. So uh, Calliope, which I am no longer pronouncing Calliope or Calliope because of Perfectly Generic Podcast, I volunteer transcripted uh, most of the Calliope episode. I ended up... Um, having some issues with my arthritis in my hands and I couldn't do the typing anymore. So I was not able to completely finish it, but 90%, but like I, the first like 50 minutes of that one. Um, so, and having to hear Kate Mitchell say Calliope a million times, uh, has convinced me that it is the superior pronunciation. It does just kind of flow nicer as well. Um, Thumbs up emojis because words don't work. Yeah, no, that's a feel. R.I.P. She left to become... Excuse? What? <laughs> oh, wow. That... She left to become James Charles. Uh, you're okay with it because Dave Pettisprite's your favorite. Dave Pettisprite squared is... Yeah, I love Dave Pettisprite uh, squared as well. Um... But yeah, anyway, Cal uh, Calliope, Caliborn, Lord English, and original male and female characters. So we're, it looks like we're getting uh, some new characters, potentially. People who people missing who are also of note, uh, no Carpatians, no Mayor, no Peregrine Mendicant, you know, press F to pay respects to our beautiful Carpatian friends. Um, yeah. No mayor, I know, I know. <laughs> no mayor, no point. <laughs> yeah, poor mayor. Um, okay, so. Epilogue canceled. <laughs> okay, so. Ugh. Um. All right. So now let's tackle this, which honestly, like, this list of content warnings is more of a trip than the actual fucking chapters that were posted. Um, <laughs> so I'll read through the list, and then basically all of these tweets are talking about the content warnings. So, um, oh, right, this. So I wanted to do this first before jumping into that, right? So this is about the authors. So he's saying, I'll wait until later to talk more about specifically uh, the writing process, but it was a significant collaboration between Andrew um, at Cepheid Variable 
and me. Jen did a lot and is an incredible writer and largely, largely the one to thank for it being as well written as it is, so credits to her. Um, you know, like Andrew wrote all the, the dialogue in the prologue, it's that sort of collaboration. So that's kind of how the process went here. Um, did I have other V-tweets? This is the first one, right? I'm trying to remember because I don't remember if I linked everything properly in my document. I think I fucked up already. I did fuck up already because I didn't link the Viz Media post. I'll have to... Let me just insert something to remind myself to link that somewhere. Okay, so... Um... Only major characters are mentioned? That's true. Like, there could be, like, side appearances, but I feel like... And I'll get into, like, the, the tweets a little later, but they were pretty thorough in tagging things. The epilogue is actually just tags. Um, yeah, so I'll link... Sorry, I have to be, like, keeping on top of this while I'm streaming. So, um, that's the writing. And so this is the Twitter for... The other author, if you want to check her out. They wrote prom stuck? What? No way. Oh my god. Holy fucking shit. Like, I adore that with my whole heart, but also I'm absolutely screaming right now i mean you literally just heard me scream <laughs> i don't need i don't need to like say that i'm screaming you have ears and are listening to me talk oh my god oh shit i accidentally clicked on the fucking link and then it opened in a new tab in my browser in my phone okay chat should be loading um i don't know what to do with this information <laughs> I super don't know what to do with this information, but I adore it. <laughs> Legends only. Yes. Holy fuck. Wow. I'm... Beachless. Do I have this on? Oh, I don't have that on screen. I opened it up in the wrong browser. Give me a second and I'll put it on screen. <laughs> just, just for. <sighs> yeah, there's the name. Wow. Marching Stuck. Oh my god, I remember that one. I thought that one was hilarious. I loved it. <laughs> um. 413 is the most mild day known to man. When we're reading prom stuck on stream. Uh, risk of sexy sex tips for having sexy sex. <laughs> oh my god. Honestly though, like, I have been thinking of maybe doing, uh, like, it was an idea that was fielded a while ago to potentially use bonus streams to stream fanfic. So, I mean, Rose, by, uh, as, uh, another thing. So the poll for the next, uh, bonus stream game, um, is ending on Monday. I'm gonna say at like eight o'clock, so I've got some time to install the game and all that stuff before stream. Um, but Rose of Winter currently has 100% of the votes, which is yeah. I wasn't I wasn't sure if Dream Daddy would really be a hit. I mean, I stumbled into owning it anyway, so it's totally chill if y'all are not uh, interested. But oh my god, wow, that is a thing that I didn't realize. <laughs> Dream Daddy could be after. Yeah, I mean, it'd be a fun one to do eventually. Um, you're still reeling? Honestly, same. Like, I, I know that basically everybody who has ever and will ever work for Wet Pumpkin, um, is, uh, kind of, uh, recruited from being prolific fan artists um i know that's kind of like how they function generally speaking but this completely blew my fucking mind <laughs> 
I mean, I haven't read Prom Stuck either. I remember seeing it around. Actually, there was a... I watched on YouTube. There's a dub. Somebody dubbed it. Because it's got art, right? Yeah. Proudly hosted on Photo Bucket. Oh my god, that just makes this whole thing ten times better. Wow. Yeah, I watched a dub of this on YouTube. That's where I w watched this from. Oh my god, that means that has he read prom stuck? Oh, wow. I don't know what to do with this information. Like, it's just, it's out there now. Holy fuck. Um. Oh yeah, no, the dub was not finished. Yeah, it was not a finished project. I'm sure there's a playlist on this person's channel. Um, no. There's, there's no playlist? Um, yeah, you guys, you can see this person changed fandoms. Uh, where? Okay, I'm gonna go back to this. Here, okay. You're so, I will link this in chat um for anyone who would like to check it out hussy red prom stuck is such a powerful sentence oh my god yeah no absolutely it is um <laughs> so there's prom stuck for those of you who are not familiar and would like to get familiar um it's it's cute it is cute uh, by my best memory. I mean, I haven't read it in... Or... When did I watch that? Probably 2014. <laughs> 2013, maybe? Um, new stuff to listen while you draw. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay. So... Whew. Uh, tag stuff aside... Right, so there's also this tweet. So, V, so questions of because this is not the complete epilogue, this was only the first three chapters of the prologue, right? So, <laughs> yeah, I promise you, I promise you, we're gonna read every single individual tag. Um, how long is it, and when are we getting the rest of it? Longer than you think, and sooner than you expect, so don't worry. So, that's just like getting that kind of questioning out of the way right off the bat. Um, that's how that's working. Uh, okay, so I'll read through the full list of tags. I'll read all of these tweets, and then we can rip these apart. <laughs> oh, see you, friend Frida. Um, okay, so let's break this down. Graphic depictions of violence. Major character death. Rape. The economy. <laughs> xenophobia. Pregnancy. Alternate universe. Mind control. Non-con. Uh, which was probably just paired up with the rape tag. Um, breastfeeding, misogyny, sexism, transphobia, misgendering, canon compliant, canon divergent, getting a little contradictory, uh, redemption, dubious consent. Yeah, they put like non con kind of tags in there for like three different ways to say that. Um, my phone is giving me a message that unfortunately messenger has stopped i was not even using it thanks um where was i uh mind break world war political intrigue robots child abuse rough sex uh child neglect alcohol use breast milk death incestuous undertones uh mental illness suicide polyamory clown dynamics <laughs> dynamics meta abuse fridging which reminds me i meant to google that i may or may not be reference to gamzy being in the fridge um but i don't believe it. okay let me just incognito window this because if it's something weird i don't want it in my history uh so 
Okay, so fridging is literally just a TV trope where you put a person in the fridge. So that's just, that is as I thought. Just Gamzee being in the fridge. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had to Google it though, just to be sure. But apparently it's like a legitimate trope. Um, <laughs> anyway, we have a lot more left on this list. Uh, genocide, diapers, murder, honk, as its own tag, honk. Children, gender transition, depression, toxic masculinity, sexual abuse, friends to lovers, uh, speciesism, babies, manipulation, gore, infidelity, marriage, non-binary characters, milking, <laughs> identity questioning, feet, <laughs> political rebellion, fascism, rapping, drug use, funerals, religion, eating, food, aliens, possession, light BDSM, theft, furry, anthropomorphic characters, power imbalances, blood, trickster mode, body horror, gerrymandering, <laughs> starvation, cuckolding, interspecies relationships, guns, vor, assassination, Alien biology, detransitioning, chronic illness, vomit, drugging, cannibalism, unhealthy relationships, capitalism, eggs, <laughs> slut shaming, black romance, kidnapping, fago, bimboification, <laughs> poisoning, teenagers, domestic abuse, reality television, orbit positioning, ghosts, Revolutionary rhetoric, self sacrifice, propaganda, super PACs, PICA, early 20th century dance movements, prison camps, existential crisis, xenophilia, daddy issues, bad parenting, addiction, and clown. Okay, I missed some things in chat. Let me just go to catch up on what y'all were commenting on while I was reading off that fucking laundry list of things. Um,. You did see one thing about Rose saying that just because something's not in canon doesn't mean it's not canon. Yes, we will get to that. Um, oh, fridging is the concept of a female character being killed off for shock value or to further the main char male character's story. Oh. Well, I don't like that one, but we'll see how it goes. Oh, Eben, welcome! I, I missed you. You snuck in there while I was distracted reading this massive fucking paragraph of content warnings. Um, <laughs> welcome, welcome. It's settled. We haven't actually started reading yet. Oh, God, it's been... We've been streaming for, like, uh, half an hour and we haven't even started reading. Um, when you read it, you got scared to read it. I mean, yeah, that's, uh, that's you know, reasonable. There's a lot of heavy stuff in there, but I'll get to the the tweets from v regards to what the process was behind that um which i mean you've likely seen but just for clarity's sake um for posterity um hey welcome back coyote um feet yeah i know feet um yeah non-binary characters milking mm, don't like that one um just just <laughs> i know gerrymandering is honestly the most confusing one but apparently fucking obama is a character in the actual like thing so maybe it's something to do with that or also yeah detransitioning mm. but that's again um we'll get to more discussions v for the day olive isn't here i know f um can't wait to Super PACs? I know, right? That's a US political term, right? Or is that just like a politics term? I forget what super PACs means, and that's another thing that I meant to Google. Yeah, and just the word clown. I mean, separately, there is uh, clown dynamics, but also just the word clown. Um, personally, think, think some of them might be linked to homo stuck, like bimboification. Yes, um, that is, yeah, that's a valid theory. I've seen that tossed around a bit. Um, the Roxy and Jane comics by Dirk. 
some of the themes. Yeah, that's that's the thing, right? Um, might be the possession. Consent is not just sex stuff. Also true. Obama cuckold state. <laughs> um, political intrigue. Yeah, super PACs is an American political thing. Yeah, okay. Um, rape, the rape stuff. Yeah, that is also... There's a lot of um, not so great looking words in here, but... I'm going to cover a couple of issues when discussing this because it, it has been kind of a hot button issue. All of the words that are mentioned here, everyone's like, what the fuck is happening with this? Okay. So to begin, uh, let me just pop this link uh, in my documents so I remember to actually fucking put it in the description. Okay. Seen some people making assumptions about the warnings block, so I'll clear things up. The content warnings are not a joke. They are meant to work like AO3 tags if it is something that comes up, however minor, we've tagged it. Specific example, the rape tag isn't an overwhelming part of the story, but it's a theme that's discussed by the characters in some way. So we're warning for it so the reader can make the decision about whether they want to read a story where this topic is involved in any way. We made the decision to be thorough in tagging this work so that no one will be blindsided by any of this content. I cannot give a detailed explanation of everything that happens in the epilogue. Content warnings cannot be exhaustively specific and comprehensive, but I'd like to caution people from jumping to conclusions about what these tags mean for the story. When the rest is out, if there's anything in the warnings that makes you concerned personally, check with someone you trust to make sure it's something you'll be able to read safely. So. Um. Or <laughs> oh my god! Sorry, I just looked at chat to see if anyone had posting anything else while I was talking, and all I, all I saw was where's the tag for Rose's mommy issues. <laughs> I mean, like true, but holy fuck, uh, y'all just like blindside me every stream. I love and appreciate it very much. <laughs> um, who? Oh my god, Blake. Wow, y'all. Okay. <laughs> so, um, this is the approach that they've taken with the tags. Um, like, they tried to be pretty serious about them. I mean, you know, I feel like there's still maybe a little bit of lightheartedness tossed in, like, um, specifically tagging for teenagers in the epilogue to a webcomic that's about teenagers, for example. Or, um... You know, juxtaposing canon compliant and canon divergent. Um, but for the most part, like these are like they're they're trying to be legit here. Like they seriously, um, yeah, this here. Okay, there are there were multiple people involved with writing the epilogue, and several more involved with reviewing it for content and sensitivity, including women, people of color, and trans people, so nothing has been included thoughtlessly or for the purpose of insulting anyone. Please wait until it's out before you make judgments about the content. So, this has been proofread, because I know that specifically, I mean, red flags for me too, the fact that they specifically mentioned detransitioning, I was kind of like, what's going on there? Um... There's the link to the tweet. Um, yeah, like that, you know, is a, is a totally fair red flag thing to come up, right? Um, but I have received, but there's been confirmation from this and like a couple of other reliable sources that like it has been very thoroughly proofread. Like, and they have, they learned from the Skynet mess that happened in January, like, this, this is, uh, everything but Homestuck all the way from up to present day is just a, you know, a beautiful piece of proof that people can learn and change. It doesn't always, it, it's, it, you know, cancel culture is not the greatest way to go about things. We have to give people the room to learn and change, and this is what ha this is what happens in the in the best case scenario, right? Like this is very clear evidence that that shit went down, and they were like, "Oh, fuck, we need to fix this," and they did. Like they're working on it. I and it, it makes me really happy to see it. Um, I'm let me non binary. I mean. <laughs> 
yeah, non-binary character, I mean, they're kind of using them, because AO3 tags are also used as content warnings, but it's just, uh, uh, yeah, I feel like that one was just, like, yeah, just definitely not nixing it, the non-binary thing, but, um, Skynet thing? Oh, the, the, the cursed hidden files? If you, um, well, I've lost track of chat. I don't even know where I was in talking where y'all are responding to me to at this point. Chat's moving fast, and I super adore the energy today. Um, I'm just getting a little lost. <laughs> yes, same odd. Love being non-binary and living my best life as well. NB writes, fuck yes. Um, wish I were you if you're saying you don't know about it. Look, Coyote... Don't go looking it up, you will only be disappointed. Long story short, um, there were some old, old, you don't know about, you don't know about the Skynet stuff either? Okay, in January, January 1st, um, well, Pumpkin rebranded to Skynet, they posted some files hidden in the website, including a link to some very old, uh, like, how old are they? They got, like, six years or seven years old? um, documents, internal documents that were giving, like, a backstory to the Condus's presence on Alpha Earth, but they made the mistake of being, like, super anti-Semitic, among some other things. These documents went up with zero proofreading at all. He was just like, these would be a cool, fun treat. Tossed them in there. It did not go well. (laughs) It super didn't go well. And that's what I meant by them learning from the sky in a debacle, right? There was immediate outcry, and, like, those, the documents were taken off the website within two hours of being posted. And then, you know, there was an apology put up, like, the next day. Like, they were on it. And it, yeah, it was a big oof. But this is growing and learning, right? They got sensitivity readers for this. Um... So, you know, growing and learning. I love it so much. I, and I really, really appreciate that they took that to heart and were like, y'all, we put in the effort for this. Um, yeah, so that's what I meant by that. Um, did I link this one in the document already? I think I did, right? Yeah, I did. Okay, okay. Um... Right, so this is the final, because there's tags for rough sex and light BDSM, so, which also made everyone go, what the fuck? Um, so addressing those as well, there is no explicit pornographic content in the epilogue, but the kids are adults now, so there are some mature themes that you would expect from a story that focuses on the relationships of adults. Um, so basically that's what those are about. Like, there's not going to be literal porn in canon Homestuck. <laughs> Oh, fuck it, imagine, Jesus Christ. Um, not gonna, I am fucking determined to actually read the epilogue, like, the whole, like, everything that's been posted. Um, it might, I mean, let's see how the timing works out. (laughs) Actually, I should probably see how the timing works out, and then maybe have to do, I'll have to do a part two tomorrow. So, you know that's that uh okay so that's all of the excess links that i had um with regards to that so that is just a pretty good explanation giving a little more context i mean looking at these links at the all of these different um content warnings as well like some of them it's kind they kind of set off red flags but then thinking back on homestuck proper technically speaking these a lot of these tags that are kind of yikesy could also be applied to homestuck proper like you know the rape the non-con the and the rape and non-con kind of tags right like when um what's it called when we went into the ancestors backstory you know it, it was you know clearly be you know being told that mind fang raped the Dolorosa like it happened it, and it was talked about in the comic right um other yikesy kind of what the fuck is that doing their things um all the positioning and eggs mother grub 
like we're probably gonna get like honestly all the positioning tag could also be applied to homestuck and to like the hype swap friend sims because of the descriptions of the mother grub so yeah there's a lot happening here and it's ugh. but yeah it's best to kind of reserve uh, any judgments on that until after we actually see what they've done and in what light they show these kinds of topics. Anyway, that's my thesis statement on that, I guess. We spent a long time talking about the tags. <laughs> There's, like, a lot going on there, though. Um, yes. Uh, oh, yeah, bimboification. That's one that I, I just wanted to say that again, that bimboification is a tag. And, yeah, it is likely related to... Stream is- oh, for the love of- Okay, well, I'm glad that I'm recording this, pre-recording this on my computer. It's back. Are we back online? My internet is- it's showing, like- Like, my internet is showing me that I have full, full power here, so, oh, for the, okay, let me reload, um, is it back, are we back, like, I can't, I think we're back, okay, let me reload my dashboard then, because my preview is telling me there's a network error, um, Stream held is kind of shit. Yeah, that gra that little graph is looking like garbage. Oh yeah, that whole that whole time when y'all were like, "This is bad." Um, the graph was just like rock fucking bottom. So that's cool. I love when it does that when I'm streaming important things. Um, <laughs> every few minutes it freezes. Mm. Government assigned homestuck day is over in but. <laughs> It cut just for a second. Okay, yeah. No, it's not looking great. But, um, shall persevere. And hopefully this doesn't get bad or worse. Um, <laughs> government assigned homesick days. Yeah, it is actually 11.50. We're getting really close to break here and I haven't even started reading the actual fucking chapters. So, uh, without further ado, I should probably start doing that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ten years after their adventure began, the heroes are enjoying a well-earned retirement on Earthsea, but John still has one last choice to make. Prologue. So, this is novel style. So far, there are some predictions as to how and when the style will change, but I'll get into that after we finish reading it. Um... Break is almost here. I know, it's almost break time already and we haven't even started reading the damn thing. I predicted that this would happen. I kind of knew that this would happen because, holy shit, like, there's so much to talk about. Um, but... Caliborn's almost here. <laughs> yeah, there's... Caliborn's driving to Starbucks as we speak. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, Caliborn goes to Starbucks is break today. Something a little more lighthearted, uh, since this is not so lighthearted. Um, so, uh, actually, I'm gonna have some water before I begin, and then we'll get back in. Well, we'll get, jump back in. We will start, finally, after 50 minutes of talking. Okay. Whew. I'm hydrated. <laughs> Burger extra. God. Okay. Who? Serious face. Serious. Who? Because this is this is serious shit. God damn it! Save the references for when I play the video. <laughs> 
I gotta get my I gotta get my serious reading voice on, and I can't do it if I'm fucking dying every time I look at chat. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Whew. <clears throat> Prologue. One. It starts with a crack. Everything else rises up from that like steam, a trembling thread that cuts through space in jagged lines, splintering the void into razor-sharp shards of putrefying leptons and quarks popping apart like raw eggs in a microwave. It's coming undone at a subatomic level, from the bottom up, from the inside out. From the top down, it looks like the eye of a storm, a black hole so supermassive that it spans the width of eternity. It turns infinity into something as thin and fragile as cellophane, shreds it of its dimensions, a piece of paper pinched together at either end, a hole poked through it. At the center of that hole, the edges can be heard fraying. Pandemonium as continuity buckles in the middle and the two ends come smashing together. Around the holes, ghosts scream. They claw at the dying borders of their dreams with fingernail-chipping desperation. They whip together like wind, trailing the mutilated streaks of their hypothetical futures with them. It's a multifractal neon cyclone of primordial dis of primordial conclusion, a churning blender of hyperfinal, ca catastrophically terminal, overwhelmingly permanent double death. The screaming distorts and plunges and plunges low as it gets closer to the cavity. At the center, that distortion turns into an eerie music. That's where the cacophony ends. The shattering, the screaming, the squelching, the sounds of elemental particles being torn apart like string cheese shoved through a meat grinder, then dumped down a strangely melodious garbage disposal. It all turns to the same tonic dominant, matching pitch and tone, ironing out the rebellious flats and sharps until the discordance becomes exquisite, a subharmonic symphony that can only be heard in the bones. At the dead center of the event, it is extremely quiet. A silence made of all the suffering that limitless sempaternity can hold, bleeding together until the prism turns to obsidian. It's too vast to comprehend, too black to behold without closing your eyes. Retreating to the back of your own eyelids is to seek the comfort of a familiar darkness. It is to reject an absolute tenebrosity so perfectly alien it threatens to rip the humanity right through your eye sockets. This is the end of everything. This is the end of paradox space. You wake up. And that is, of course, describing the black hole from Act 7 ripping the whole of paradox space apart um and of course dead center conducting all of the cacophony is alt calliope got your calliope as the muse the conductor of this black hole space <laughs> okay Get excited, y'all. There's... There's text. There's conversation. There's Rose. Ah! I got so fucking excited when I saw Rose down here. I just lost my shit. <laughs> Your name is John Egbert, and you have just had a terrible, deeply pretentious nightmare. You snap out of bed, soaked in sweat, your heart hammering like a fire alarm. It is just as you feared. You've been dreaming in anime again, and you have no idea what it could mean. <laughs> of all the ways to put it, I fucking love that if you've been dreaming in anime again. Like, that was like, you get the, all of that purple prose, and then you get to you've been dreaming in anime again, and I just started laughing my fucking ass off when I read that the first time. <laughs> because, of, and of course, because of the 
actual Act 7 was in, like, an, a very anime-esque kind of style, right? So it's just like... <laughs> oh, God. And that is a touch of Andrew Hussey. Stream. Oh, for the love of fucking... Okay, um, my webpage is refreshing, so I still have internet on some capacity. Oh, I'm live. Okay. Damn, I don't know what the fuck is wrong with my internet. I'm so mad that it's doing this tonight of all nights. Anyway, um... I don't know why it's blipping. I'm really sorry, folks. I have no idea what the issue is here. I love the again, since apparently it's so common for him to dream in anime. Yeah, it's like, I mean, well, I think because he talks about this, I kind of took it in and uh, as that he has repeatedly been having these nightmares, and I believe it comes up in the conversation with Rose as well. Um, but it's good for you, but. Twitch is holding you at gunpoint while you watch the while you watch an ad. I'm yeah. I'm four followers away from being able to apply for the affiliate program so that I can actually make some money off of the ads that Twitch is forcing you to watch anyway. Um, it's like if they're forcing you to watch this shit anyway, like I think it's pretty bold that they put advertisements on channels that can't benefit from it. Like my YouTube channel, no ads because. I can't, I don't have enough to even apply, even if I wanted to put ads on my YouTube. Um, but, yeah, if they're gonna force you to watch it anyway, then, like, if I can make, if my presently unemployed ass could make a few pennies from that, it would be nice. <laughs> um, okay, I don't know where I, but yes, you've been dreaming in anime again. Yeah, okay. Whew, reading voice. <laughs> Look outside just to make absolutely sure the world is not ending. The sun is coming in through your window in bars of soft yellow. The only sound you can hear for miles is the wind skimming the hollows of your neighbor's pipe homes. It's a normal day in the Salamander Village, which you refer to as Salamander Village because the damned salamanders never bother to give this village a name, you guess. Absolutely nothing of note has ever happened here in the entire history of this planet, which you would know because you created it. Uh, the skimming the hollows of your neighbor's pipe homes, reminiscent of, uh, of course, the... Yes, the sound that Desolation plays, that whole, um, that poetic page in Act 1. Where it's like like skimming the hollow of a cut reed, I think is uh, a specific line from that page that it's referencing. I know the Salamander Village. He's in he's in the carpet, not the Carpet Kingdom, the Consort Kingdom. Yeah. Um. Shoot, I was gonna double check the credits because I can't remember exactly who is attributed to what kingdom, but it, it kind of comes up. Uh, I it kind of comes up when they talk to each other. Okay. Beside your pillow, your phone is vibrating. Rose is calling. The screen of your phone reads 9.30 a.m. April 13th, and also the number 46, which is how many text messages your friend left you while you were sleeping. A bit excessive, even for her. Answer the phone. Oh my god, I haven't busted out these character voices in so long. Let's see if I still got it. <laughs> Since when are you since when are you known to operate your telephone? Since I don't know. Has it really been that long since I called? I can't remember the last time I can't remember the last time. Neither can I. Anyway, what's up? First of all, happy birthday. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Fuck, I forgot. Am I correct in presuming this April thirteenth will be as uneventful as the last? 
Yeah, I don't want to do anything this year. I hope that's okay. Of course it's okay. It's your birthday after all. Rose. Yes? So... Neither of them can remember the last time they spoke, which is fucking heartbreaking. And there's, of course, there's a couple other things that we come across that confirm the theory that, like... I mean, it was already pretty well clear from the... Uh, the credits that John kind of, uh, I'm thinking of, a, it's not, not regressed, um, but, like, he kept, he kind of, he got, he was kind of depressed, he really kept himself, he wasn't really keeping in touch with people, um, and we can see that here, like, he's been really pulling back from everyone. Fucking heartbreaking. Right, yeah, Terzy Jade. Dave and Carcat are the troll, um, I believe. Um, Cal Cal uh, Clivey, Roxy, Rose, and Kanaya are Carapace? Yeah, I think that's it. So many pros made you nostalgic? I know, I, it, like, physically hurt. <laughs> to be like this is canon content this is real these are my these are my my children even though they're not really my children they're more like my peers because in keeping with the pattern of aging them in real time they're all 23 I know the confirmation that they don't speak much anymore and oh and Roxy and Rose and the the line about Roxy and when Roxy says that her and Rose don't speak much anymore, it fucking stabbed me in the chest. Oh. You wander to the window and watch the salamanders go about their day. All over the neighborhood, the little dad salamanders are putting on their little rumpled hats and picking up their little suitcases and kissing their little families goodbye for the day. You've always been confused about what exactly they contribute to the global economy, but it's pretty cute how much they love playing at being suburban businessmen. The silence over the phone is growing awkward. You've stalled long enough. You decide to just come out and say it. Don't even- I know! Oh my god, odd! No, you'll see. You'll see. It's a com- it's just- it comes up in conversation. Um... It was fucking devastating. Oh, yeah. Uh, um, also, so here's our content warning for the economy. <laughs> um, California is stuck in his car seat. Oh, yeah, it's after. Mm. This is the shortest part, so I'm going to finish this. And then we'll break. And then we'll do the rest. I think we should be able to do the rest, uh, the next two parts in, like, an hour. Okay, um, right. So, you decide to just come out and say it. I've been dreaming in anime again lately. I have no idea what it could mean. I see. It's horrible, every time. And I don't mean because anime is bad or anything, it's not that. Whenever I have these dreams, everything's breaking apart. Millions of people are screaming and dying. I mean, dying permanently. Not the kind of bullshit dying that we've been doing a lot over the years. So, like, kinda don't like the implication that they've died a few times on Earthsea and had to come back. Hurts my heart as well. You gotta raise his ad. Oh my god. Fuck. They're watching us. God, I fucking hate that shit. Okay. So we're back on- I take it we're back online. <laughs> Alright, um... Where did I leave off? Right, so there's that. Um... Right, so then here is what I was referring to earlier with the confirmation that, um... 
John has been having these dreams repeatedly, like the same one. A couple yards over, a salamander blows an astounding spit bubble. Truly one for the books. Your eyes trace its meandering journey into the sky as you gather your thoughts. What do you think it all means? What do I think what means? What do you think it means that I've been dreaming in anime? <laughs> I don't have the slightest idea what it means that you've been dreaming in anime, John. To be honest, I... You wait for Rose to finish her thought. She doesn't, which is troubling because you have never known Rose to leave a thought unfinished in over ten years of acquaintance. You suppose it's possible it may have happened one of the times she died. You wouldn't bet on it, though. Where's Casey? <gasps> True. Yeah, content warning was just for us, personally. That this would force us into a very depressed emotional state. Yeah, that's, uh, Casey's not mentioned, so I guess Casey has just been reintegrated back into the regular salamander populace. I mean, it sounds like John hasn't really been fit to take care of, uh, child, I guess. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I guess Casey was reintegrated back with the rest of the carp, carp as his consorts, salamanders. Yeah, the line about Rose never talking, stopping me, even in death. I know. It's so Rose. God, I love her so much. I just... All of these... People. Ah. Okay. Rose. Are you okay? Not exactly. What's wrong? I think my condition's been getting worse lately. Condition? It's why my message probably sounded urgent. You left, you left 46 messages. Yes, they were all urgent. Oh. I don't think I can wait much longer before telling you. I held out for as long as I could. I figured your birthday was as good a time as any to let you know. Let me know what? It's crept up on me these last couple of years. Gradually, it, gradually enough to ignore it as gradually enough to ignore as it was happening, but I can't anymore. No, gradually enough to ignore it was as it was happening, but I can't anymore. Lately, the visions have been overwhelming. Visions? John, I have terrible headaches these days. Talking on the phone doesn't help at all. Would you mind flying to my apartment so we can continue this in person? Oh, yeah. You mean... Now? Yes, now is the time. I have put it off long enough. You move the phone away from your ear and assume an expression you haven't practiced in years. It is the look of a man who actually has something to do. Holding the phone directly in front of your face, you speak into the receiver. Okay, I'm on my way. Bye, Rose. As you hang up the phone, a familiar feeling settles over you. A feeling of standing? Standing and being alone. In your bedroom, as a young man, on your birthday. You swear you've felt this feeling before. It's almost like... A young man stands alone in his bedroom. It just so happens that today, the 13th of April, is this young man's birthday. Though it was 23 years ago when he was given life, and 10 years ago when he was given a name, it feels like it is only today that he will begin to understand what all that means. The young man is you, John Egbert. What will you do? Mm. I, God, I fucking love the callbacks and the way that they, like, even just in terms of, like, callbacks to the beginning of Homestuck as well, the fact that you start with John, and then the next person you're introduced to is Rose. The next person, you know, with the, the order of the introductions, it, it breaks away from that in the next part. But, like, I just thought that was, like, so resonant of the kind of callback type thing that they were trying to do. Oh, so beautiful. I love the way they ended that. That's, like... 
hook, line, and sinker so perfect. <laughs> um... Oh, I missed, what are y'all saying that's me and that hurts about, I was caught up in the moment reading. Captain Lord is entering Starbucks and he is waiting in line. Indeed. Got you in your 13 year old homestuck heart. I know, it hit me right, right in the heart. I mean, it was 14 for me when I started reading, but like. Yeah. Holy fuck. Okay, I'll wait for Odd to finish that sentence and then we'll get into break. Um, I have so many fucking text notifications. What is happening? Um, I may or may not have been putting off answering a bunch of messages because it's my birthday. Like, it's nice that Facebook does the whole thing and that people are like, hey, that's cool, happy birthday. Um, but <laughs> my brain is kind of like, why are there... 20 people getting in touch with me all at once and I don't even regularly talk with most of them <laughs> oh I gotta take care of that after a stream um oh finally a man with something to do yeah 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 it's all a blur yeah oh my god 12 that's young for starting into homestuck although I do actually at the 413 meet last year for my local community there were like 11 year olds and I think a few nine year olds it blew my mind um face to electric boogaloo yeah okay so load up the next page lots of more John and Rose um but first back in five I know nine it freaked me out <laughs> um I may be getting that wrong. It might have just been 11 and I might be confusing it with something else. But 11 even is really young to be getting into Homestuck. Oh, holy fuck. Um, so, break time. And then we'll be back. That is indeed, child. It, yeah, it was a lot to handle. <laughs> okay. Five minutes. And we will be back. Hello, welcome back. I'm glad you all enjoyed the choices for break today. <laughs> um, you have the flying jar. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> um, oh, I gotta get the break text off. There we go. All right. So, hopping right back into it because we are running short on time. I have a feeling that we might not get through the whole thing today, and I don't like that. So! Um. Oh, you gave it a cucumber. Okay, well, that's nice. <laughs> Alright. Back in the story. Two. When you arrive at Rose's apartment, you find her asleep on the couch. You slide the balcony door open quietly. Rose? Her eyes flutter open. She looks like a ghost, and not the kind of ghost that looks and acts exactly like an alive person. <laughs> a specification that would only be needed in Homestuck. How... how long have I been sleeping? I don't know. I just got here. Are you okay? I'll be fine. That looks like a lot of pills you're taking there. Yeah. It's not what you're thinking, though. What am I thinking? These are controlled substances that have been prescribed by a legitimate doctor to ease the symptoms of my condition. I am using them only as instructed. Okay? So there's nothing to worry about. But you said you have a condition. Isn't that bad? You watch her rise in stages. Her arm is trembling when, where she's bracing it on the couch. Oh, yes. The condition itself is not ideal, obviously. And perhaps it does constitute something to worry about, in the context of a different conversation. All I'm trying to say is, I'm not backsliding, if that's what you're wondering. Yeah. 
Oof, ouch. She's getting very defensive about the medication, so it's kind of hard to tell if she's being defensive because it's true or just because people are side-eyeing her in the... Yeah. You spend several pregnant moments saying nothing at all in response to this. You examine Rose's supine, languid form on the couch, optimistic that she will continue to speak, continue speaking any moment now. I struggled with substance abuse for a while, years ago. Remember? Rose, Jesus. I wasn't going to accuse you of being a drug addict, and I didn't fly over, and I didn't fly over here to give you an intervention. It sounded like you had some important stuff to tell me, and the fact that you also seem to be sick is more than a little alarming. Is more than a little alarming. I wouldn't say I'm sick. Just having spectacularly debilitating headaches as a result of my visions becoming more frequent. Oh, yeah. What are these visions you're having? I'm a seer of light, John. I know. So you mean like... Your standard psychic visions about the future and stuff? What's going to hap- what's going to happen? Should we be worried? It doesn't technically pertain to the future. Well, not our future. My abilities have broadened considerably beyond their previous horizon. They shed light on many unseen events. Past, present, future, in realities and frames of reference that have no intersection with ours at all. It seems to be an unfortunate side effect of the god to your abilities. They can advance at a rate beyond one's physical ability to keep up with. Fortunately, it doesn't seem to be happening to anyone other than me. So, here's where we gotta keep in mind the uh, Homestuck's penchant for unreliable narrators. Rose has prescribed these side effects. First of all, Rose has prescribed the, the illness that she's experiencing to the increase in her powers. And correlation does not necessarily equal causation. Um, they could be connected, but it's also possible that they're, that her reasoning is wrong. Uh, that her reasoning is incorrect. Um, um, but also she's... I had a point. I think that was it, actually. Let me reread. Re um, yeah, and also the idea that her abilities are, you know, increasing at a rate um, beyond one's physical ability to keep up with it. She's generalizing her experience across all god tiers, even though she's the only one experiencing it. So it seems like a more unique thing. Um, yeah, so I thought that was an important thing to note. Yeah, I can't say I've noticed anything like that. Or improvement in my powers, for that matter. It's not about gaining additional power, so much as the gradual dissolving of the boundaries between your own awareness and that of your many doomed selves who perished in other timelines. It's a slow and apparently rather uncomfortable accretion of knowledge. Perhaps I'm the, I'm the only one to notice any change, since my aspect explicitly relates to knowledge. Yeah, so that is plausible as well, but so this is touching on they don't directly say, do they? They might actually mention it in the next chapter, but this is all talking about the ultimate self-concept that was uh, introduced, like, near the end of Homestuck, that everybody was kind of like, why the fuck would you <laughs> introduce a massive uh, game-changing concept at the end of Homestuck? Well, we are finally getting back to it here. Um, and yeah, that kind of knowledge is a lot to handle without that sprite brain to kind of synchronize that information in the way that characters like Dave Petta and Jaspros did. Um, is stream being shit again? God damn it. Uh, like, I'm not fucking running anything else on my computer, and I'm getting, like, the green light for frame rate and kilobytes per second on uh, my OBS program, so this has to be something on Twitch's end. <sighs> mm -hmm. Okay, I think I said everything I was thinking about when I read that line. Yeah, ultimate self. It skipped it. Ah, oh, damn. 
Okay, well, I have it recording the whole thing. So if there's any parts that you specifically want to go back and watch the stream part of it, uh, I'll go up on YouTube. Okay. <clears throat> I guess that all makes sense. So what are these visions showing you? Many things. They're quite disjointed and sometimes hard to rearrange into coherence. But in totality, I have pieced together a greater understanding of our present situation and all the events that led us here. I'm just gonna have some water. You watch Rose stagger to her feet and cross the apartment. At the kitchenette, she knocks back another pill with a practiced motion. No water. Her vacant stare drills into the countertop as she quietly waits for the medication to take effect. And? And what? What is it about our situation that you wanted to tell me? Is it bad? Good and bad are words that don't mean anything. Okay, so here's where it's, she starts to get into the meta stuff that has even me kind of confused. Um, so hopefully we can talk this out together. <laughs> Your face is looking to the side. Honestly, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so here's where it gets super meta. And we're going to have to try and sort this out together. Because I don't have 100% grasp on this part. <laughs> Guaranteed. Okay. Good and bad are words that don't mean anything, beyond a certain threshold of mortal consideration. There's a different scale I've come to understand. Another dichotomy that's less... emotional, I guess? Consider, instead of the word good, using the word essential. And what exists as the opposite polarity from essential is... something that is best not to contemplate. What are you talking about? This sounds fucked up. Yes, that sounds like a reaction you would definitely have to the things I'm telling you. I really should cut it out and just start from the beginning. You follow Rose to the balcony. She raises a hand and points directly into the clear blue sky. She points with purpose, as if to say, there, right there, precisely, is where the green sun would be if it still existed. The green sun is gone. What? It has been destroyed, at least from the current frame of reference it has. It still existed, and therefore in a way that's hard to explain, cur therefore in a way that's hard to explain, currently exists, over a nearly infinite span of time, presiding over the birth and death of countless universes. But in this universe, our universe, is no but this universe, our universe, is not one of them. You saw this in a vision? No. Jade told me. She did? How does she know? She can't draw power from it anymore. She can't draw from its power anymore. She no longer has the ability of a first guardian. It has been this way for several years. I suspect she has kept this fact on the down low, however. That's surprising, I guess? Or maybe not. I don't know. It's not like she tells me a whole lot these days. Ugh, another stake through the chest. John and Jade have drifted. John's just drifted from everyone. Ugh. Oh, God, it's freezing up again. Ah, I'm really sorry about the issues of today. I, like, it's gotta be on Twitch's end. I'm getting thumbs up A plus from every check and balance that I can change on my end of things. But, um, yeah, so... This here, uh, the death of the green sun. So this was something that was tossed around a lot in fan theory circles. What exactly is happening to the green sun and the influence of the green sun in the new universe? Does it reach? Um, how will Jade's powers react? Uh, things like that. So, um, yeah, now we have, we have our answer. The green sun did exist for a certain amount of time. Uh, okay, it existed for 
They were 16 when they entered the new universe, so they're going to be, so they're 23 now. So, seven, uh, years. Um. Yes, I am, I do know how to do math. <laughs> you just read about, oh, you're reading ahead. <laughs> Streams. Uh, um. But yeah, now we know that the, so the green sun existed for seven years, disappeared after that because I mean we because the thing is that we see the green sun being destroyed in Act Seven, so it's kind of like what's happening with the un new universe and Jade's powers. I like the fact that Jade is still alive because I read a fic where the where uh, the new universe was outside of the reach of the green sun and Jade fucking died. <laughs> So, like, um, that's, I like the fact that she's alive, <laughs> but, um, yeah, so that's, that kind of gap in the story completely closed off. It's also not like she's had any particular need to unleash the full fury of the green sun. Not while she's been gallivanting around with Dave and Carcat under whatever perplexing social arrangement they have set, perplexing social arrangement they have settled on. Anyway, her account of the green. Okay, yeah. So that's the that's the Jade Dave Cat. Um. Um. Comment. Um about their perplexing social arrangement which basically i think is uh just saying not giving an explicit statement um again unreliable narrator rose's comment is just because she personally is not close to the situation and doesn't really know what to call it or what they want it to be called or what exactly is happening there um but like perplexing social arrangement i know right and the fucking the multi-tag and the polyamory tag they are fucking there so like it's happening. Something's happening. Um, people are still getting real excited for some Jane Kelly Roxy action because we see Kelly Roxy in the next chapter. Um, which, again, is not confirmed because unreliable narrator, John doesn't know what the fuck their relationship is because he's been out of touch with all of them for ages. So, yeah, none of the shippy stuff has been solidly confirmed, but, like, it's there and it's gonna keep chugging along and y'all, I'm excited. <laughs> Okay. Anyway, her account of the sun's destruction syncs up with the data supplied by my visions. I have no doubt it's gone. How did that happen? It doesn't matter much for our purposes. There was a cataclysmic event, a suicide strike by a very powerful being, much like the one Dave and I attempted once upon a time. But it turns out the explosive force we released was only a catalyst, a casual gesture, what was needed to destroy the sun was a consumptive assault. Consumptive? The entire sun was swallowed by a supermassive black hole. I digress, though. You press your eyes shut just for a moment. Behind them, you see a black hole so supermassive that it spans the width of eternity. You quickly open your eyes again and pretend to forget what you just saw. Because this is ringing bells for that nightmare that John keeps having. There's really no route through this expository garden path that will adequately cushion you from the bottom line, John. You will need to travel back into canon and defeat Lord English. There's the crux of the matter. We're getting into that good shit, finding out how exactly Caliborn's masterpiece comes to be. That is the journey of the epilogue. I'm so excited for the rest of it. Okay. You shrug and try to look casual. You pull off the most casual shrug that a guy has ever shrugged while being presented with the inevitability of his own fate. If Rose were looking at you right now, she would be totally convinced that you are approaching this topic with a level of nonchalance that is entirely plausible and genuine. You're sure of it. Yeah, I had a feeling that was going to come up again someday. I'm sure we all did. That is, even those of us without visions. 
I was doing my best not to think about it. I guess we can't put it off any longer then? Now was the time. We are now was the time. We are rapidly approaching a point of no return. If the decision isn't made soon, it will be too late. The issue will no longer matter. When exact when exactly is the point of no return? Today. <laughs> Fitting, of course, April 13th. That was the moment you were reminded we're never going to be free. Yeah, but it's finally filling in that gap. I'm just like, yes! Ah! And along, and there's going to be so much more other stuff, and I'm just, oh my god! I am excited. Okay. I've I said that like a million times over the stream, and I gotta like rein it in and read the fucking thing. <laughs> I'm hoping to have this page done by one, and I will go over time to read the last one, because it shouldn't take more than an hour. Today. Wow. Okay, then. First, one question. Um, why? Why what? Why do I need to go back and beat him? I mean, sorry if this is a stupid question. I guess he's a huge awful monster, and that's just what you're supposed to do with huge awful monsters. Take them down for their crimes and such. But why does he actually need to be defeated at all? To be honest, it's been years since we've, we've even bothered thinking about any of this, and everything seems... Take a look around and survey the current status of all life on Earth, which is totally possible to do from the vantage point of a single apartment balcony. Fine? <laughs> you can't believe it's 2011 again. I know, right? Uh, I mean, for, for, for me, it's, it's 2012 was the year I hit the big league because I got into Homestuck like end of 2011. But it's like, I am 15 years old again, sitting in my bedroom, patiently twiddling my thumbs, waiting for updates. Like, <laughs> I love it. Okay. Of course everything is fine here. We're outside of canon now. And this is where things get super meta. This is it. <laughs> Okay, let's figure this shit out together. Because Rose goes into a lot of interesting things. Yeah, I know. What does that actually mean, though? Are you saying this isn't really happening? Of course it's happening. Just because certain events take place outside of canon, it doesn't mean those events are non-canon. Oh. In other words, there is an important distinction between events which can be considered to occur inside canon, outside canon, and those which are not canon at all. The day we went through that door and claimed our reward, we passed a threshold between continua marked by differing degrees of relevance, truth, and essentiality. Essentiality. Those are the three pillars of canon. What? Big same, John. What the fuck? Okay. So, yeah, Rose is trying to, and I think, um, I know, ooh, let me, uh, Twitter, <laughs> let me just see if I can grab this again, um, somewhere down here, okay, um, So, does Marvis and his canon slash non-canon jargon have anything to do with the epilogue? Perhaps some sort of foreshadowing. The epilogue was finished when I'd written my friend some roots. So, it so definitely had it in mind. So, this is... We can possibly uh, connect this to... Hold up, I need to grab the link for that. Um, We can po uh, potentially connect this to... Um, Marvis's root as a form of understanding it a little easier. Um, the way they want to start to see was by leaving the canon comic. Yeah, so like that's that's already kind of like a, a solid thing right before this um, epilogue writing. Um, but yeah, Rose is kind of. So it's relevance, truth, and essentiality. Okay. Rose shoots you an irritated look. You know what that look means. It's reserved for the sort of bozo who just said what once too often. 
An event set to take place inside canon will have a, will have non-zero values of relevance and essentiality while maintaining an absolute foundation of, in truth by definition. So events inside the canon have, uh, they contain relevance and essentiality and are completely based on truth. Whereas events outside of canon have diminished values of relevance and essentiality, or for the most part, can be considered neither relevant nor essential at all. So outside canon events, not relevant or essential, but still based on the truth of the truth of the canon. But such events can't be said to be untrue either. Instead, it's better to regard their truth value as highly conditional. Are you still following? So, okay, hold up. So they end, okay, and they have kind of conditional truth, which I think she expounds on, but mm, that's, I think that's one of the parts that I'm kind of fuzzy on. Say, oh yeah, totally. Oh yeah, totally. <laughs> so to be clear, everything that's taken place here on Earth C since we exited the canon can be considered completely irrelevant and for the most part, absolutely inessential. Yet none of it can be called untrue, at least up until precisely today. Okay, then what does non-canon mean? Events that are formally non-canon have no truth whatsoever, by definition. They may have relevance and essentiality values that are non-zero or even quite high, but, what, but only as projections along an imaginary axis resulti resulting from highly subjective frames of reference. But due to those events having no truth, and thus carrying no real weight, the other properties are basically rendered meaningless. Yeah, so the non-canon is, uh, yeah, conditional truth only true in certain circumstances, so that's outside canon. And non-canon is just, like, not based strictly on truth at all. You can feel your eyes go wide as the gears in your head slow to a stop. The implications of what Rose is saying are as vast as they are completely incomprehensible. Your mind has just been blown. John, are you okay? Your pupils have got, gone quite wide, thereby facilitating the appearance that your mind has just been blown. Sorry, I'm just trying to wrap my head around this. That's the classic good fucking Homestuck shit. Not just talking about, like, story meta, but literally meta with the narrative itself and, like, back and forth with this fucking... Poking at the ah, oh. like this. I don't ever fucking say this out loud, but I love this so much. You of all people really should have a good intuitive grasp over these concepts already. You're the one with the retcon powers, after all. I know. Like mostly, I get it. I think it. I just wouldn't have thought to put all of this in such a jargony way. Sorry, that's kind of what I do. Indeed it is, and we love you for it, Rose. <laughs> it's fine. I'm just a bit rusty, is all. And it feels like I've been... It feels like it's been so long since I did or even thought about anything that mattered at all. Yes, the longer we live outside of canon, the more tenuous our relationship with canon becomes. Hence the urgency. Then what's going to happen if we keep dragging our feet? I mentioned that events outside the canon can, can have a truth value that tends to be conditional, remember? Um, well, I did, but let me put it another way. As long as we live outside canon, everything that happens will technically be real, but only conditionally. There are certain crucial events inside canon which must happen in order to continue to prop up the legitimacy of events here on Earth C. And you specifically, John, have a responsibility to make sure those events take place. And I take it that means going back and killing Lord English? Yes. His defeat is the keystone to this entire continuity. Much like his life, in some sick way, governed the overall design of the bridge which that keystone was holding up. But without it, all of this falls apart. Everything we've been through, in a way that's impossible for a single mind to fully comprehend, becomes retroactively discredited. 
You miss them just being dorks. I know. Everything is so serious. Um, yeah, so basically she's saying that everything that they've accomplished here becomes completely discredited if they never finish the time loop that brought about their instance of the game in the first place. Yes, that sounds right. Okay, yeah. So, reality will be destroyed or something? Hasn't that already sort of happened? I mean, when all the black space started cracking? No, this consequence isn't physical or even a disruption of the timeline. It's more of a conceptual unraveling. If you miss the chance to authenticate canon events, something will take place that's a bit difficult to describe, but I've encountered a term for it. It's called dissipation. Like a notional fading, as if something, somewhere, is undergoing a process of forgetting, and we are what is being forgotten. All ideas, people, and their full potential potentialities, possible outcomes, and their specific unfolding, all these things live inside, a co inside conscious frameworks. The further removed we get from authentication of canon events, the less relevant they become, and they slowly fade from the conscious frameworks which keep them stable. So this phrase, this whole turn of events this, that she's talking about here, dissipation, so this is where we can kind of call back to what Marvis said about the interpretations of the canon contributing to the value of canon itself, or how did he put it? Um, the inter Basically, he was saying that, like, fan and interpretations affect the canon itself, and they contribute to the way that the work grows. Um, so, yeah, so that's what is being gotten at there. So, um, I saw, who was it? Um, I've seen in a couple places people laughing hysterically because this is basically saying, <laughs> as he's saying, oh shit, I need to put out this epilogue um, while people still care about Homestuck or people are gonna forget what Homestuck is or something along those lines. I feel like I'm not wording that properly, but you know, the conscious framework that's forgetting is us. <laughs> we are the conscious framework that needs to be kept stable and needs to be stopped from forgetting the existence of Homestuck. <laughs> That's how you took it and you thought it was hilarious. I was still, I think I was still like too hyped when I read this the first time to really grasp at the concepts, but after participating in some other online discussions, as well as reading it right now, um, <laughs> quite frankly, some things didn't click into place until right now, um, that's when I finally kind of like, oh my god, yes, and also that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, because if... Yeah, we are homestuck because otherwise the story doesn't exist. Precisely odd. Like, the the importance of fandom and fan memory to keeping works alive. So that's, and, you know, and that's, again, like, right? Connecting back to Marvis and what he was saying about uh, canon and non-canon kind of things. So... Yeah, considering zodiacs always have to be certain colors and their brains will always have quadrant knowledge. Never be able to look at card suits the same. Yeah. Yeah, those kind of things are the things that are going to keep this shit rolling for ages. <laughs> Long after, you know, if any of us ever fall out of keeping up with it or caring about it as a frontline fandom kind of thing, that's still going to be with us. Can't leave even if we tried. Precisely, Blake. <laughs> Okay, continuing on. Make a theatrically startled expression. Okay, I guess we don't... Okay, I guess we don't want that to happen. Or unhappen. Whatever. So I just retcon poof back to English and start, like, 
brawling with the dude. <laughs> I fucking love John. He's just, his, his brain just immediately is like, simplest plan, let's go. <laughs> this is why he needs Tara's instructions and later Rose's instructions in the epilogue of what to do. Um... Where does Pan's cat fall on the spectrum? Um, I mean, outside of canon, I feel like outside of canon because it is is it is based in some truth, which is what the image literally looked like in the comic. And also, there's the whole thing with the sufferer's pants, and then later on we find out about Cancri. So there's like connections there. There's a foundation of truth that that's based on. I think. It's not really essential or relevant, but it does still have a conditional truth value. Hey, I'm understanding this now. I'm understanding things. Look at that. That's pretty cool. Pants get his alpha car cut if you're not a coward. <laughs> uh, okay. Rose. Please tell John the actual fucking instructions. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. You wouldn't last. You wouldn't last a second. You'll need a team. Also, you don't want to just dive headlong into a battle with his hulking adult form. That would be that would be tactically foolish, and furthermore, would skip over some very important steps needed to authenticate canon. Like what? I mentioned that English's defeat was the keystone to the continuity. But this is an oversimplification. Yikes. Well, we sure as fuck wouldn't want to simplify anything. <laughs> John, please don't be a bitch. I'm unwell, remember? Sorry. <gasps> Slow clap it out for that fucking line from Rose. That's the most hilarious line in this whole fucking update from today. And is absolutely going to go down in history as one of those oft quoted lines you know like <laughs> you know like dave saying to me near the size of of fucking texas or like um car cats this is your you know like this is your god speaking or like this is one for to use to use a idiom, I think would be the correct term to use an idiom from earlier on in this particular piece of writing. This is gonna be one for the books because holy shit, Rose! Oh my god! <laughs> Everything about the way she says that, John. Please don't be a bitch. I'm unwell. Remember? Ah. <laughs> uh... And it's just, it's, it's a perfectly, it's a so very homestuck way of busting up these walls of thick information. Ah. Uh, I love that whole thing so much. And I love Rose so much because that's such a very Rose thing to do. Like, not just, you know, like, I'm, I'm sick or I'm not feeling good. I'm unwell. How very purple prose. Oh, God. <laughs> I fucking love her so much. <laughs> okay. It's almost one o'clock. Um, here's what I'm thinking. I'll try, we'll get through the rest of this page. Um, I think the next one is shorter. So we'll get through the rest of this page. So we started reading this at like 1220. So it hasn't been like, it hasn't taken a full hour and the next one is shorter. So I think we should be able to finish by two. <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, so we'll finish this. We'll take another five-minute break, um, so I can rest my voice, and also I kind of need to pee. Um, <laughs> and then we'll do that last little bit, just because I feel like it's really important to keep this momentum, um, up, and keep everything fresh to read through the whole thing at once. It'll be a good time. Okay. I don't know why I'm singing, clapping. That's been a long day. Um... <laughs> Zoom in on Kanaya's name. Mm, we'll get there. Okay. The true keystone, which is a necessary component of his defeat, is the juju. The house-shaped object you stuck your hand in to gain your retcon powers. 
Oh, yeah. While empty, it resembles a gap, like a hole in canon, whose only purpose is to be filled. In serving that purpose, it grants one with the radical canon-altering powers that would be needed to fill it. Once filled, it becomes solid. No longer a gap, but a serviceable, load-bearing wedge in our continuity. Like a keystone. And once delivered to English and directed his way, it empties, it empties itself again, releasing its narrative-bridging payload. It functions as a weapon, and in some matter will bring about his demise. In some manner? It's a complicated artifact. As old and unfathomable as anything else in Paradox space, like the Green Sun or English himself. Don't worry about it for now. The important thing is that, in the due course of their, your travels, you end up loading and unloading this weapon. How am I going to do that? Once you set things in motion, it should just happen naturally through the narrative momentum of your journey. I'm really just warning you about it, rather than instructing you. Okay, thanks? You're welcome. <laughs> how, again, how very Rose. John's just kind of like, uh, thanks, and she's like, you know, straightens her back. You're welcome. <laughs> oh my, I know, right? I was going through this whole thing. I'm like, they're in Rose's apartment. That has to be Rose and Kanaya's apartment. Where is Kanaya? I was like, it's same. I was like fucking losing it. Like, where is she? Um. Oh yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> She's like, Rose, I love you so much and I miss you. Rose looks at her phone. You recognize Kanaya's distinct typing style in the window. Rose's thumbs begin to fly across the keypad. She continues to text as she talks. Uh, but we don't get any dialogue and we don't get to find out what they're talking about and we don't get any- ah! I really hope that, um, I- that this is not strictly from John's perspective. I mean, Homestuck as a whole has been from many, 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 many perspectives, so I- highly doubt they will stick to just John for this, but not knowing what's happening with Rose and Kanaya in this moment in particular is like putting an ache in my heart. Single but with two people, yes? Yeah, I know, right? Like, y'all. Uh... Okay. <sighs> so if we're going to go back and and so if we're going to go back and kill him in time to authenticate canon, I guess we have to go we have to get going soon. Like today? Yes. Are you sure you're actually up for a fight though? No offense, but you're looking a little worse for the wear. I'm not going. Oh. None of us are. Only you. What? But you said John, this is the victory state. What the hell does that even mean? When we went through the door and passed beyond the threshold of canon, we effectively retired from bearing any responsibility for influencing canon events. We've all been sort of decommissioned as active players on the cosmic stage, with severely diminished relevance attributes. All of us, except for you, of course, since you've retained your retcon abilities. Okay, I get that. Kind of. But couldn't you all just come along anyway? We could, but it wouldn't serve any purpose. It wouldn't plug up the remaining dark spots in canon. You'll need a group of active players, those still stuck inside the stream of canonic karma. Who? Nothing too extravagant, just different versions of us. Younger versions from a particularly dysfunctional impasse in our journey. I can point out the exact moment in canon you should be disrupting, and how you should disrupt it. In fact, I've already written it down to spare you the trouble of remembering. How sweet. But yes, that is confirmation, finally, of who exactly the kids in Caliborn's masterpiece are. They are not the John Rose Dave and Jade who left the game. They are the John who left the game um who you know kind of gets them all there john had his 16 year old self hey bitch honestly 
Yeah, and John, I'm unwell and retired. Yeah, she's just like, I'm literally never doing any of that bullshit ever again. Um, but it's alternate timeline versions. So the ones who beat the game, except for poor sweet John, the rest of them get to stay and be happy on our sea. Well, happy is relative. We don't know how they're all doing. They're kind of, they've all kind of drifted apart, right? Um... But, yeah, that's, um, I lost my train of thought. What was I talking about again? Um, yes, the kids. So it is kids from doomed timelines, not the ones that we know. Rose leads you back inside and retrieves a letter from her desk. She hands it over, still typing one-handed on her phone. She sits down and you read the letter. You're still texting Kanaya. Huh. Is anything confusing about my instructions? No, I remember all this. It shouldn't be a problem. It's just weird to think about revisiting this. It seems like an eternity. Like, we were all completely different people back then. I assure you, we are all still fundamentally the same bunch of losers. Which is, I, I believe, doubles as both an assurance for John and an assurance for the readers that there's not going to be that, you know you know there may be some changes in relationships and you know emotional states but they are all still fundamentally the same bunch of losers <laughs> losers yeah no that's exactly it though too she literally is just like we're all losers and it's just like fuck yeah you are you're my losers and i love you we as readers are also still the same losers exactly we're all just a bunch of fucking loser nerds and that shit is a-okay <laughs> just having a damn good time okay uh oh my god it's seven after one y'all this is taking a long time we're almost at the bottom of this page and then i really gotta pee <laughs> okay hmm. rose is ultimately right about that the way she is about most things you continue to scan the letter and grimace slightly. Should I really punch her in the face? I feel kind of bad about it. Last time I did that to someone. Yes, you absolutely should and must punch her in the face. So we don't know who the fuck is going to get punched in the face, but it's going to be one of the girls and it's probably going to be f fucking hilarious. <laughs> oh, it's not going to be Vriska because John specifically says last time I did that to someone, not last time I did that to her specifically or anything like that. And so it's not going to be punching Vriska in the face. Also because that was just, you know, that is a different retcon journey. <laughs> um, so options are Jade, Rose, Jane, Roxy, Kanaya, Tara Z. Mm -hmm. I've heard someone say they thought it was Tara Z because... Um, it's just Rose, <laughs> a petty thing from Rose for Terezy taking off on them into Paradox Space, disappearing to find Briska. I've heard a lot of people estimate Jade, but no reasoning behind that, and that kind of confuses me. I don't really know what that would be all about. Um, Roxy to wake her up. Oh, that has potential. Um... I've also heard that it, some people estimate that it could be either uh, Grimbark Jade or Crocker Tear Jane it, as a way of waking them up from their kind of influence states or influence state, whichever one needs to be punched in the face. Um, by process of elimination. Yeah, it could be literally anyone. Like, it could be... It could be for reasons we don't even know yet, like, but yeah, John's gonna have to punch a girl in the face again, and I'm, who the fuck? Okay. You exhale and turn the paper over in your hands. The other side is blank. You flip it back over, having fully processed the instructions drafted in polished purple handwriting. You like how Rose still writes in purple after all these years. Some things never change. That also hit me right in the heart. <laughs> Alright, 
This seems straightforward enough. I mean, aside from the part where we all have to fight an invincible monster. He isn't entirely invincible. He will be vulnerable to Dave's weapon. I believe other gambits should present themselves as well. I don't think it would serve the mission well for me to tell you exactly how it will go, but at least I can offer this bit of encouragement. If you follow my instructions, English will be defeated. It is an absolutely essential outcome. And essential, if you'll remember, is the word we should be using instead of good. I see you're advising we go after him when he's young. I guess that makes sense. Go get him before he gets all big and strong. Like, kind of a surprise attack? Sure. That dude sucks. He was, haunt he was taunting me a while back. Like, I think he wants me to come fight him? Anyway, I just ignored him, obviously, because I'm not a stupid idiot. But I guess today will be his lucky day. <laughs> but I guess today will be his lucky day. <laughs> you take a seat next to Rose on the couch. Examine your friend. Her eyes are closed and her hands are folded in her lap. She's not asleep, but she looks wasted. Like all of her life has been sucked out through a straw. Like she's insubstantial. When you were kids, you always thought Rose... You always thought that Rose Lalonde had all the answers, that she could fix any problem with a wall of text and a witty rejoinder. You guess that much about her hasn't changed. She's still trying to solve the problems you all left behind. You can't believe how sick she looks. How did this happen to her? My aching heart. Yeah. There's a lot of, like, kind of reminiscing on relationships and people and how they changed. Essential, not good. Yeah. Well, because things that would technically fall in, fall in the bad axis of good or bad can also be essential, right? I think so. Like, that's, you know. All I, I know. Oh, that's so many C's. That is so many frowns. <laughs> I know. I know. Poor sweet Rose. Oh, yeah. That's the other tag that I'm really worried about is funerals. Who fucking dies, hussy? <laughs> Don't you dare. Better be someone in someone inconsequential, at least. Or maybe someone who dies and... Uh, blah, I'm... <laughs> because technically speaking, the funerals tag could also count for Homestuck, right? I mean, the first thing that comes to mind is Roxy's funeral for Rose. But, you know, and we, we got Rose back. But I don't know if we have that opportunity here, and I don't like it at all. <laughs> I should probably get going and let you rest. We can talk about- we can talk all about it when I get back. I'll fill you in on how it went. Hopefully you'll be feeling better by then. Oh, um, yeah. Is something wrong? Rose opens her eyes and looks at you. But she says nothing, just looks. I'm not scared, if that's what you're worried about. You already said we were going to defeat him, so nothing to fret over, right? Yes, you... Something flickers through her eyes, almost too quick to catch. When she smiles at you, it's warm and sincere. You're going to do great. Rose slides her arm around you. After a while, she releases you from the embrace and gets up to fetch her bottle of pills. She pauses at the bedroom door to look at you one more time. Goodbye, John. She closes the door behind her. <sighs> mm-hmm. Sorry, I'm just getting caught up on chat for a second. Don't say goodbye like that. I know. The, oh, the automatic... Yeah, I know the automatic emojis are bad. Um, But, like, yeah, that whole... That you're going to do great. Goodbye, John. It really seems like she's looking at him like she's never going to see him again. Which is fully fucking possible. Because he's the one who has to take them to the fight. So it's, it is very well possible that it may be alt timeline alpha kids and alt timeline rose dave jade but alpha john who gets stuck in the house 
it could very well be that Rose has seen and knows this is truly the last time that she will see John. And it's, oh, it's so fucking heartbreaking. Y'all, there's been a lot of heart hurting (laughs) with this today. I've, so many times I've just been like, oh, that stabbed me right in the heart. Honestly, you could probably make a drinking game out of the number of times that I said them something along those lines. Uh, homestuck. God damn it, Blake. I know. Homestuck. John is going to be homestuck. There it is. There's the title. <laughs> going to cry. I know. Oh. Okay, almost done. And then we'll take another five so that I can pee. <laughs> Look at the letter. You run your thumbs along the edge of the paper. Is this really it? One hug from Rose and you're off to face your destiny? The instructions in the letter are clear, but you aren't sure precisely what to do next. Inertia and indecision keep your feet planted firmly on the carpet. Then, as if directly answering your quandary, your phone buzzes in your pocket. It's a text from Roxy. Roxy! (laughs) just had to, like, yell that because I love Roxy so much! (sighs) Ah! Okay. Read text. (laughs) It sounds important. You get up to go without even thinking about it. You exit through the sliding glass door and leave it open behind you. Okay, and this is the final chapter. It's a little bit shorter than the one before, but it'll still kind of take some time. So we're probably going to be here until at least two. (laughs) Um, But yes, let me just, let me just highlight this bit of text here. Roxy and Calliope! Oh my god! Okay. Um, you legit got emotional over that page? I know, like, me too, like, I feel like I was too hyped to cry, (laughs) but, like, I was, it, I could feel it in my chest. (laughs) Ah, yeah, so, um, shit, I run out of videos. (laughs) I ran out of videos. Does anyone have requests of things for me to play during break? All right, hello, we are back for chapter three. I know, get that visual whale. Ah, Israeli guy, hey, thanks for popping in. Um, It is supposed to be over by now, but we've been doing a shitload of talking, so we are still on the third and final part of the epilogue. If you have not read the first two parts, um, I would highly, highly, highly recommend reading those on your own time rather than staying for the stream just because uh it's very important context um or if you want to see the earlier parts of the stream i'm going to be uploading this as soon as possible you're in the middle of chapter three. Oh, that's perfect because we're right at the beginning okay no that's great all right so let's start right in then um just get my phone to stop being a piece of shit. Okay, we're good. <laughs> okay, so. Whew. All right. Three. It's a beautiful day in the Carapace Kingdom, just like it was in the Human Kingdom, and just like it was in the Salamander Village. For whatever faults this paradise you created might have, you sure don't hear many complaints about the weather. You're sitting with Roxy and Calliope on a giant chessboard-patterned tablecloth. It's a nice touch, you think, but if you spent any time shopping in the Carapace Kingdom, you'd know most things you can buy here are chess-themed. Friendly Carpatians go about their day around you, passing through the park with their eyes politely averted as they pretend not to notice that three celebrities are having lunch in the grass nearby. It's extra polite of them, because you and Roxy are having a very personal conversation. She looks all right, mostly tired. At least she seems to have enough energy to babble at length about philosophical gibberish and things about canon and such. Oh, well, guess she filled you in on all the ultimate self-junk then. The what? The shit where she starts knowing everything and feeling bad. I just love Roxy so much. I just... mm. (laughs) Oh, that's not the term she used. She just kept describing it as a condition. You haven't, you haven't been feeling anything like that. You haven't been feeling anything like that, right? 
What, getting, getting to know my ultimate self? Yeah. Man, I barely got a hold of my basic ass self. Ah! Oh, big fucking mood. Roxy, I love you so much. Heh. <sighs> yeah, she said she was the only one going through this. That, that she knew of. Poor Rose. At least all that medication seems to be keeping her sort of functional. Roxy gives you a serious, sidelong glance. Remember that whole totally unprovoked spiel Rose gave you about substance abuse? Mm. She said it wasn't like that. I mean, she said it was under control. Well, what the fuck do I know? The only illicit substance I've, I've ever done is lick that stupid trickster lollipop. Never again. <laughs> In reference to Calliope busting out the drugs at Rose and Kanaya's wedding reception. <laughs> Yeah, whatever. Can't say it's much my business anymore. Rose and I aren't as close as we used to be. Oh. Ugh. I mentioned this earlier, but it still, it hurts even more to read it than just to think about it. Oh. When I upload, will I only put the actual reading? Uh, nope, it's gonna be the full stream, including all of the conversations with chat and commentary and discussions of the subjects and yeah all that jazz all that and a bag of chips <laughs> Callie's really the one for bringing drugs to the wedding out of the kindness of her heart yeah she was just like you know what's a good time this <laughs> You nod, sort of knowingly, because you're thinking about how you hadn't talked to Rose in ages either. Roxy gives you a quizzical look, but you turn away before she can draw meaning from it. Miriam, Miriam's been keeping her real busy since they got hitched. They both vanished down the brooding caverns and that was pretty much it. Only since she got sick and spent more time at home did we start talking more again. It's been great, it's been great, but our conversations have been a little bit upsetting. And here it comes. The thing you were trying to avoid thinking about the moment Roxy texted you about how you haven't talked to Roxy in ages either. You were having such a nice time ignoring that fact, too. Mm. Yeah, so they haven't- they moved apart because she just got stuck down in the brooding caverns and it's like, oh no, what's happening? Huh? Change the subject. <laughs> So, are you and Callie still living at the same place that I last saw, the one near the tower? You look toward the bell tower in the distance. It's a gothic building so tall that it cuts a shadow through the midday sun. It's an important landmark in the kingdom, the tallest structure for miles around, and the only way you can ever navigate your way here flying. Carapa's architecture is otherwise, ident otherwise identic, a reflection of their functional collectivist society. Yup. That's cool. It's a nice place. Yeah, I like it here. I thought of, I thought I ugh, I've thought about it, but I'll probably never want to live in a different kingdom. I s still feel most at home around the chess guys. Oh, cuz of growing up with the little Carpus king and Carpus little town. Ah. Oh my god. Is really guy you're breaking my head i never thought about it like that before but it's true and it's awful <laughs> that's so weird to think about this can i his mother-in-law but like also daughter-in-law Ugh. the ectobiology stuff just keeps like it continues to just be real fucking weird sometimes oh <laughs> Makes sense. That's how I feel about the salamanders. Which I realize actually makes no fucking sense. <laughs> they lead simple lives. I don't really care for the chaos of human or troll cities. Neither do we. You walk you watch Roxy smile and reach for Calliope's hand. Ah! Time shenanigans are very weird. Um <sighs> Yeah, so this is the Roxy Callie stuff. A lot of people are like, Jane Roxy Callie writes, but Jane actually hasn't been mentioned yet. 
maybe she'll come into the picture a little bit later. I mean, of course she will because she's in the character list at the beginning. But this. Ah, uh, Kelly Roxy is canon. I don't care if John wants to tactfully avoid saying anything at all about Cal Roxy and Calliope's weird, ambiguous relationship. It's only weird and ambiguous because he's the present unreliable narrator who doesn't know what their deal is. But I think their deal is big gay. <laughs> and that's my thesis. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. <laughs> yes, we have hope for Jane, Ro Jane Roxy Kelly writes and Dave Jade Cat writes. Like, it, the, the hope is there. We gotta dream big, guys. <laughs> Look away before you start dwelling on it. Oh, this part is, um interesting too john reflecting on his and roxy's relationship because they did kind of have like a weird like pseudo crush type thing going on for a little bit in there in canon and john actually talks about it here which is like interesting to hear um his thoughts on you start dwelling on it immediately looking probably quite conspicuous with how quickly you whipped your gaze away but seriously what is up with their relationship is it romantic platonic can shrubs even have a romantic relationship are they even interested in it like on a fundamental level do their brains and hearts even work that way questions like this used to keep you awake at night you look at them at where roxy's fingers are entwined with calliope's green claws calliope is still wearing the ring of life the same one you obtained in a ludicrous adventure through the afterlife, then reobtained in a ludicrous adventure through canon when it was stolen from you. It's the same one that allowed Calliope to stop being dead in the first place and to come live with your friends here on your beautifully renovated home planet. And it's the same one you gave Roxy all those years ago to fulfill a promise made to a very special new friend. At the time, the gesture felt so important. It felt more meaningful than any gift you'd ever given. Like there was some grand emotional gravitas about about it that signified something deeper than, than what it turned out to be. You have since concluded you were just imagining things, ascribing symbolic meaning to gestures that they simply didn't carry, like the dumb kid you were. Tactfully avoid saying anything at all about Roxy and Calliope's weird, ambiguous relationship. Uh, so... But you can't stop thinking about it. What goes on in Roxy's head? What she, what she thinks about you? But you can't stop thinking about it. What goes on in Roxy's head? What she thinks about you? You and all your friends have dispositions affected by your classes and aspects. Which, if I may take an aside, um... It was a great TED talk. Thank you, Israeli guy. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just getting caught up on uh, chat here before I go off on another diatribe. Um, staring romantically into each other's shoulders. I, oh, I can't tell. I know, this is bi big, unrelatable narrator hours because John super is, like, not reading the situation. Uh, yeah, it's okay for John to want more love and attention, too. Like, and yeah, it's okay for him to kind of feel sad about it and reminisce, as long as he doesn't try to disrupt what's going on in front of his face. Um, or like, try and bust them up or whatever. Or e even if he just wants to talk with Roxy about it to clear the air about these feelings, like, that's, like, those can be really important and liberating conversations to have to stop wondering about things. But, yeah. <laughs> Roxy Kelly writes, um, yeah, but so he says here dispositions affected by your classes and aspects but the thing is that classes and aspects are not an acting force your class and aspect are assigned because they are an innate part of your um um personality like they're ascribed to you because of personality traits that you already possess they are not assigned to you and then you change to fit the label the label fits you you know what i mean never thought the epilogue would be Barack Obama with Jonathan Ayer. I know. I am 
Barack Obama and the uh, gerrymandering content warning are the two things that I'm probably the most confused about out of everything. And I... Uh, like, it can't even... They, that wouldn't even have just been tagged if Dave, if Dave pulled another kick at Barack. Like, Barack Obama's literally a character in the story, and I don't know what the fuck to think about that. Like, that's just... That's a lot to... <laughs> a lot to think about uh but yeah so that's kind of like an aside that i wanted to add in there about his kind of uh warped perspective on how classes and aspects work you and all your friends have dispositions affected by your classes and aspects you think you know what that means in your case but what about her you can only speculate Void is a place where things sink and disappear, where they linger forever but cease to exist. You aren't actually sure if your feelings for Roxy ever faded, or if they just grew numb with time and distance. Is it the same for her? You search your soul for the answer, but come up empty. The truth is, you suspect her mental interior is unfathomable. In fact, you feel sure of it. You wonder suddenly, watching her, this, this version of her, that is, the one with whom you shared all these bittersweet memories. Will you ever see her again? Ahem. John. Ahem. John! What? Please forgive me if I come across as impatient, but we- but if we are finished with the pleasantries, I believe you have a choice to make. Huh? The choice as to whether you will go defeat my brother or stay here. Have you decided yet? There's a choice? Calliope is smiling brightly, but Roxy's face has no expression at all. I was just assuming I had to go, because if I don't, then a lot of stuff will stop being real. Or I mean, stop being canon? To tell you the truth, I'm a little confused about what will happen if I don't go, but it sounds like it will probably be bad. Let me just, sorry, I'm just getting caught up on chat. Um, what aspect would you be least likely to have? Ooh, that's a good question. I have to actually think about that one. Um... You wouldn't want to have time. Mm-hmm. Yes, there's always a choice, John. There's always a choice. Indeed. Yeah. Um. Hmm. That is an interesting question. Which one you really wouldn't want to have or you think would be unlikely? Um. Hmm. I'll actually, like, that's a actually like a tough question i'll have to think on that for like a while maybe review what all of the aspects actually mean um mm -hmm. so sounds like it'd be bad okay yes meat candy time it's coming it's coming that may be so we are not here to caution you about the consequences of your decision either way but there is always a choice Roxy and I merely wish to invite you here for a nice human picnic and show our support for whichever decision you make. TBH, it's a relief to finally be doing this. It is? Mm-hmm. How much have you actually talked about this? I mean, how many people knew this was going to be a thing? Just us and Rose. Well, Dirk too, I think. She's been talking to me about it a bunch. And him too, but I don't know much. Give us the canon Rose Dirk interactions, hussy. Hand them over. <laughs> He's got like thoughts about all this shit, but whatever. That's not that's not important or even remotely surprising. Bottom line, Rose has been tormenting herself about having to tell you. I'm just glad she finally said it so she can rest. Now it's up to you. Yes, take all the time you need. Again, we aren't here to influence you. It's very important that the decision come from your desire to go through with it, one way or another. Any tampering could taint the results. Taint the... wait, what? So, what'll it be, John? A chill runs through you and stays there. <sighs> yeah, the dialogue is structured really well, but also, yeah... <laughs> yeah, thoughts in, like, air quotes, which is, like, a, such a Roxy thing to do, to just be like, uh, Dirk is waxing philosophical again, typical Dirk. <laughs> it's like AO3 Homestuck, yeah. 
was it um shit where did i because mm. we talked earlier about the possibility that has his red prom stuck right i saw in another chat people were like oh my god what if he like went through ao3 and read a bunch of fix to get a handle on what homestuck fanfic looks like to format this <laughs> that you are referring to a specific fic that i feel like i've heard of but i definitely haven't read odd advance reps gone make your move oh god it always comes back to fucking briska <laughs> Consider the gravitas of this choice. You try, but you can't because you weren't really prepared for it. You think it was a choice. You didn't think it was a choice at all until this very second. You think back to the way Rose looked at you before she went to bed. What has she told Roxy that she didn't tell you? The chill tightens around your throat and turns into fear. No, not fear. The feeling is worse than that. It's regret. You wasted your time here on this idyllic restoration of Earth. Why did you spend so much time alone, moping around the house mourning your dead father, who probably would have wanted you to get more enjoyment out of your teen years, as well as your unusually early retirement? There's so much you could have done. You could have reached out to Roxy again. Maybe she was waiting for you to do that. Maybe your withdrawal hurt her. Maybe she was heartbroken, just like you kind of feel right now. You study her perfectly stoic face and conclude nothing from it. Her expression reminds you of how Dave used to look, when you, when you first met for real, before years of living with Carcat softened him up. Impenetrable cool. Uh, real Dave Cat hours. Dave Jade Cat may be in limbo at the moment, but this is real Dave Cat hours. Um... Didn't John live with Jane and Dad Crocker? No, John, uh, John went back to his old house and lived by himself. Even when everyone else was kind of grouping up together, um, he isolated himself. He purposefully isolated himself because of his depression. And Nana. See, ah, that's right, that's another character that's not mentioned. Nana Sprite? Neither of the two <laughs> Nana Sprites are mentioned, so they aren't really in this story either. So I'm going to about because boyfriends, I know, oh my god, I literally, like, I, like, I just, I flipped my shit when I read that. I, like, yelled and giggled, and I was like, Dave Cat, it's there, it's real, oh my god. I know, right? I keep forgetting that there's two, but, um, yeah, the two of them from the end, where they both gave Jane a pie in the face at the end of, um, before Collide. Um, yeah. Dave Cat makes you go smiley face. Ah, uh, yeah, me too. <sighs> it's too late to figure any of this out now. You fucked it up already. You, you fucked it up already. Unless, of course, you choose to stay. Upon further examination, you realize that Roxy's stoicism isn't cold. There's concern there. She is displaying restraint, keeping quiet while you make up your mind. You're sweating, you realize. Cold sweat. Even worse than the anime nightmare sweat you woke up soaked in this morning. Uh, John, you okay? Looked like you were going to pass out there for a second. Suddenly, Calliope bolts upright. Of course, what was I thinking? This decision is far too important to be made on an empty stomach. She fetches the picnic basket, which naturally has been sitting there on the tablecloth since the moment you arrived. Here, before you choose which path you are going to take, you should decide what you'd like to eat. I have packed a wide variety of provisions, easily enough to satisfy even the most ravenous picnic-goer's appetite. Behold, an array of savory delights for the carnally inclined. Or perhaps something for your sweet tooth, if a lust for treats is what stokes your desire? Uh, 
Calliope produces two dishes from the basket and begins gingerly unwrapping them. The unwrapping is so ginger, in fact, that there is almost there's something almost dramatic about it. Like the opening theme to that boring sci-fi movie with the monolith and the bone-throwing monkeys. It should be playing as she peels away the cheesecloth. Um... Should be, uh, Space Odyssey. <laughs> On one plate is a pile of meat. Rare, almost bleeding cuts from animals you can't identify. The other plate holds a generous heap of colorful, exotic-looking candy. You scoot to the side and peek into the basket to see if there's anything else. There's a book in there, but no more food. This is all there is. Contemplate your lunch. Oh, what's happening in chat? Um. Yeah, I saw how the fandom was. Yeah. No, I mean, like, I kind of feel bad for real celebrities who have that literal actual experience. <laughs> quite frankly. Of, like, seeing, uh, I guess the, the, the less fantastic sides of fandom that treat them like they're fictional characters we can talk about the characters like this because they're fictional characters right but with a real person it, it takes like a whole different context um but yeah there's like you know folks who still talk about big celebrities like they're not real people and don't really think of them as real people right i just feel bad for them seeing this kind of you know fictionalization of them as a person that's a whole other side, though. <laughs> okay, we are almost done. Let's get this last little bit out of the way and have a little post-reading talk about some of the implications for the future of this epilogue. Contemplate your lunch. You put a finger to your lips and focus on the food with great intensity. You stop fretting about choices and heartbreak and eternity in Lord English. Your entire world narrows to a single point of light as you are utterly consumed by the overbearing decision about which of these absurd meals to have for lunch. Meat or candy? Meat or candy? The two possibilities pinball around in your skull meat or candy. It's a tough choice. On any other day, you might be inclined to simply follow the whims of your cravings, but no clear victor surges to the forefront of your mind. Either option offers a tempting means of sustenance. You know the meat will be rich and filling, and if you're being honest with yourself, you haven't had the most robust diet as of late. You didn't even have breakfast. It's probably a good idea to eat something resembling a real meal for once. But you're no stranger to Calliope's tastes, as far as carnivorous comestibles are concerned. You know every cut on this plate is rare to the core. It'll fill your mouth to bursting with juice, lie heavy on your stomach for hours to come as your body works to break down all the nutritious protein and fat. It might be a tough chew. It might be tough to chew. It might be even tougher to swallow. Maybe the candy is the better choice for a picnic like this. Something that'll go down easy and fill you with bright energy to, as you pass the time with your friends. You know you need to just let go sometimes and stop worrying so much about what other people expect of you. Or even what you expect of you. It's not a bad thing to enjoy yourself just for the sake of pleasure. But eat too much and all that sweetness could make you sick. Roxy and Calliope glance at each other in confusion as you deliberate over what to eat. You suppose it's taking you a while to choose, but each dish is appealing enough in certain ways. Each has its potential dietary drawbacks. You don't want to make a decision you can't stomach. Meat or candy, John? Meat or candy? You release your breath when you realize you've been holding it. You're being ridiculous. What's the sense fussing over lunch? In the end, it really doesn't matter. Whatever you choose, it'll all be flushed down the toilet tomorrow. Just go with your gut. Don't sweat the small stuff. There are much more important things out there to, f to fuck yourself up over. To be continued. <sighs> oh, one year of Homestuck for you. That's awesome, Israeli guy. Uh... 
um, general time of when you joined because you joined after Jack posted the high swap wave through. Oh, yeah. It was March before the rebranding happened and after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. September 2017. Mm-hmm. Yeah, more important things out there to fuck yourselves up over. And that's it. So, the meat candy dichotomy. I know, right? Like, it's just like the good old days. We're all sitting around going, when the fuck's the next update coming out? There's a couple, a couple of sources. Like, some folks have say, been saying they got sources, saying that it's gonna, the next one's coming out on 420. Um, we'll see how true that holds. Um... But, uh, yeah, it's, uh, this is all we got for now. Um, so the meat candy dichotomy, of course, the reason it's lingered on so much is because it is, of course, specifically referring to plot and different types of plot devices. So meat is like the facts, the filling the plot holes, the, you know, moving the logic forward. Whereas candy is the light, fluffy stuff, the emotional development, the relationship things, um, those things, right? So that's the dichotomy we're faced with. Now, here's the theory that I've heard around that I think, or at least really hope is going to be true, which is that because, of course, they said the Homestuck epilogues, plural, um, it's theorized that um what's it called oh that's right this is for y'all it's your first real update culture yeah sneak cat has really got your first update culture your first experience of like homestuck update culture like not hive swap update culture but like homestuck update culture y'all that's so sweet yeah this is it, y'all. We here. <laughs> um. Yeah. Any. Anyway, uh. So. What was I saying? Right. Yeah. So think that we're gonna, we're actually gonna get both endings: the meat end and the candy end. And the theory that I've heard that I want to be the truest is not that we're going to be left with two open endings, not knowing which one is the quote unquote true ending but that both of those timelines will converge will converge at the end back to the one alpha timeline and we'll find out you know that they were both necessary for the alpha timeline to continue as it is so that's what I have, That those are some theories that I've heard, and I really hope that what happens is that they do converge into the one ending, and it t turns out that they were both relevant, because really, you, you know, it's, you can't really have a good story without both of those elements. You know, you can't just have only meat or only candy, like, I mean, you can, and people certainly enjoy that. There's definitely different sects of the fandom that you can kind of clearly see being divided on those lines, right? Like, all of the people who got so fucking mad about how open-ended the Act 7 was, and who hate, hated Act 6, and who think that the, um, the Alpha Kids and their teen drama was so ridiculous and unnecessary, those are the people who just go for the meat, that's it, right? Like, you can see groups being divided along these lines of what they prefer. But, I mean, personal opinion, you gotta have both to make a truly good story. And I think that would be, you know, aside from concluding the plot of Homestuck, I think that would be a fantastic um, direction to go with kind of sending that message home as well russian doll i've seen the first like two or three episodes i'm watching it with my family which means that progress is slow um because we don't like binge watch things we just like we have like a whole bunch of shows on the go and we kind of bounce around between them for variety um so i have only seen a few episodes of russian doll um but I will keep that in mind while I'm watching it. I will keep that in mind while I'm watching it. 
Um, hope John doesn't die. Ooh, buddy. Yeah. No, it's very possible that John's gonna fucking bite it. <laughs> mm, right, that's another thing. Because people are saying, like, um, I've forgotten about this line, but there's a very specific line in the Doc Scratch uh, intermission at, like, end of Act 5, um, where he says very specifically, um, when John dies, surely it will not be a just death. When is the key word. And that was just kind of another thing that was kind of left ambiguous. Um... Which, it seemingly was tied up by, like, you know, the fact that John has died neither a heroic nor just death and come back to life before. But, it could also be referring to a heroic death in fighting Lord English and getting trapped in the juju. Like, mm. oh, I will let you know when I finish it, Odd. Yeah, so that's, that's also out there. That is also a thing. Okay, so that's not what I wanted to type. Okay, um... Right. So... Yeah, I th the older one shows up at the top because I think it has more views. But yes, ah, that's right. Let's see how far, and then let's see how far we'll go. Is the one that we're looking for. Uh, no longer. 413 in our hearts. It is crying time. It's the end of stream. Okay. So, we finished right on time. It is 2 a.m. precisely. Okay, it's 2.01, but still. Um, perfect timing with that. Um, that's the 4.13 special stream. And that is the epilogue, and that is where we shall leave off. Woo! <laughs> it's so invigorating to be back in update culture, honestly. <laughs> Mm, yes, I missed this. I missed this a lot. We back. Okay, so. Babbling aside, thank you all so much for coming to hang out today. Um, oh, thank you, Odd. <laughs> yes, I am also now 22 years old. <laughs> I'm just, I'm exactly one year younger than John. <laughs> and Jane, for that matter. <clears throat> but yeah, I, this was a fantastic way to celebrate, a fantastic way to end the day. Y'all are absolutely wonderful. You make streams so much fun. You brighten the room. I really appreciate the fact that all of you took the time out of your days to spend three hours yelling with me <laughs> um yeah happy 413 um in terms of future streams next weekend we'll be resuming regular problem sleuth streams um but before that on monday it's looking like we're gonna start rose of winter unless four mystery people show up and vote for dream daddy um or five i guess mystery people because there's currently four votes for Rose of Winter, and it's currently at 100% of the votes. <laughs> yes! Lots of hearts! Lots of big hearts all around! Yeah! <laughs> Spread that love! Ah, yeah! It's been a great time, and y'all are wonderful. Um, and I hope that you will also be able to hang out a little bit on Monday evening for the first, what was most likely going to be the first Rose of Winter stream. Um, your hearts are green! Yeah. 
yeah, the epilogue does appear in the read page. That's where we started off today. So I guess we'll end where we started. Here it is. Actually, what does the log look like right now? Prologue chapter one, two, three. Yeah, so that's all that's there right now. This is <laughs> four, thirteen, nineteen. So we'll get this page will fill itself out a little more. Um, but yeah, okay. Rose of Winter Monday, Problem Sleuth next weekend. Thank you all so much for hanging out. Uh, it's, yeah, you're all wonderful. Spreading that love. Um, this stream should be up on YouTube soon, like within the week. Um, I wish goggles still existed. Yeah, those are good. Like, I really now that I'm no longer like actively posting on Tumblr I kind of want to start that tagging thing now where I go and tag everything in my archive so it's easier to find because the thing is there's a lot of like fandom history stuff that would be really interesting to be able to find you know I mean it's all filtered through the bias of my liking etc um my perspective because it's from my tumblr blog but like i have a lot of fandom history stuff on there including screen caps of things that people drew on drew uh with goggles when updates came out things like that you know um but yeah maybe i'll do that one day i kind of have a lot on my plate right now but mm -hmm. it is a dream project okay Whew. my throat's getting raw i'm hungry <laughs> and it's late and uh gotta let y'all go so you can get on with your days um or your evenings whatever time zone you're in <laughs> so to conclude thanks for coming out and i hope you have a wonderful rest of your day whatever you may be getting up to um that's a Good night from my end. And, uh, yeah, let's see how far we'll go. We'll play us out.